How's it going, Seth? Um, just looking at the, the success of last week, uh, I know you've been saying that, you know, you knew it was going to click sometime. Was that a product of Jason being under center? Was that just part of it? I mean, just what kind of happened for it all to come together like it did? Uh, I think it was it was a, a bunch of things. I mean, we really we didn't change anything. We didn't change a scheme. We didn't change. Uh, I think the only thing we changed is this, our practice and the practice uh, through the bye week and the competition and the energy that was created. And you know, we've been stressing to our line just to develop a personality, uh, let it you know just let it go, relax and let it go. And I finally saw them playing with energy. I saw Eric Douglas singling first downs and things like that. That. I haven't seen from that group. Uh, we still had our share of, of MAs and missed assignments and didn't execute the block exactly how it was, but they played with such great energy and confidence. Uh, I think that was the huge difference, just the, the energy and the confidence and the passion and the strain and the running backs ran extremely hard. I think that was just the combination that allowed us to have success. And then obviously if you have a little bit of success early, that gives you confidence. You know, we, that's what we struggled with this year, starting fast and, actually having big plays happen early on to give our guys a chance to, you know, take a breath and go. Marcus, I'm sure if we went back and, you know, obviously you guys watch the film every week that Eric Douglas, pre-snap in particular, you know, takes on that leadership role, but it seemed like it was just more visible this week. Um, how much does that help a guy like Jason Brown or any quarterback in that situation, knowing that, okay, he's able to help me out a little bit pre-snap and I can just do what I need to do behind center? Yeah, it was huge. And, uh, you know, we told Jason just whatever Eric says, do it. And if you if it's something that, that, you, that Jason can see uh, from a broader picture, from a broader landscape, then he has the right to change it. But, you know, whatever Eric says goes. And... Eric's done a really, really nice job. I've been around some really good players, especially last year in Carolina with some of those guys. I mean, Eric's got a brain like an NFL player, just the things that he sees, and he's played so much football. Uh, but he he had his best game the other night, especially from a just a, like, not a captain, but just a leadership presence. Uh, I mean, he helped dictate the, the tempo of that game. Let's go to Rick Henry in the green shirt on the far right there. Hey, Marcus, I remember earlier in the year, uh, Jason told us, uh, making the transition here to SEC football, that he had learned more in his short time here than he did the entire time he was at St. Francis. Could you pick out some key moments um, during his learning process here when you looked at him and said, yeah, he's taking those steps and now he's ready? Uh, I think one of the things we walked away with uh, after the game was one of the things that held him back was not his his skill set and his playing ability, it was the communication at the line of scrimmage and calling the play and executing the adjustments and getting the snap count and little things like that were just up and down, up and down. Uh, I've been saying it for about two months now, like if Jason Brown jogs in the game, I'm not nervous at all. Like I'm, I feel like he can go do whatever he, we need need him to do to win the game. As After the game was over, the thing that you know me and the coaches were talking, some of the coaches were talking about was just he went through the entire game last week and he didn't have one issue. He didn't have one missed play call. He didn't miss any motions. Uh, we had a kid line up wrong. He didn't just snap the ball. He stopped everything, moved him into the right alignment. So little things like that is, I mean, was very rewarding for me to see just how calm and confident he was and how he was able to execute uh, the offense and communicate the offense to everyone in that stressful situation being his first start in the SEC. Yeah, I know this is a <clears throat> a what if question, but what if um, Nolan had had never gotten hurt? Um, would you be at this point where Jason would have gotten a shot? I think Jason would have gotten a shot. I think that uh, he was playing well enough and pushing at practice enough that you know we would have found spots to get him in the game. If if you know if Zeb's out there throwing for six hundred yards, no. But if there was times where the offense became stagnant, then I was again more than confident to put him out there and see what he could do because every time you put JB out there. Uh, you know, up until the point of the Florida game and scrimmages and everything, I called the game a little different with him. I just let him go. I, like, I would just, it was like air raid. I'd throw the ball and he would, like he did the other night, he would escape and find guys down the field. And you notice when he gets out of the, out of the pocket, his eyes are always downfield and allows for, you know, we talk about the scramble drill, allows for uh, big plays to happen because of how he scrambles and extends the play and he has the mobility. So I think he would have gotten a shot. Uh, I don't know if he would have gotten a start this quick, but. Again, I mean, he was inching, inching his way into playing really fast throughout the, the whole season. Let's go to Colin Taylor, front right. 
I said, how much of what Jason does and what you called for him against Florida, whether it's the off script stuff or the, the scramble stuff you just mentioned is replicable over the course of the last three games. And how much can you build on what he did from that aspect against Florida? Uh, I think we can build a lot. Uh, you know, he, he, because Luke's foot uh, and because, you know, Zeb's just, he's, he's a drop back passer, pure drop back passer. JB has a little bit more mobility. And so, you know, you can utilize a little bit more quarterback run game. And, and again, like you saw, he can extend plays and he can, you know, we can use a little bit more movement with him, which I think that you can continually build week, you know, week after week off of what you do each week, just building packages. Uh, but, you know, just again, I'm proud of what he did, just executing the offense that we've been running on top of, you know, making it a little bit better with his legs. Marcus, you guys obviously got the tight ends a little more involved last week. I know Nick caught a couple of passes on some creative plays, and Jaheim obviously had the touchdown. I just, just obviously that group is pretty dynamic as a whole, top to bottom. Just how do you feel like those guys have fit, or, or maybe seen their role expand a little bit in the last week or two, or how, how have you seen them kind of take to it? I know Kenyon as well as a guy who's stepped up. Yeah, the last I think few the, weeks. the key in that whole group is Trey. Just how he's really come on in the last three months. Uh, it's allowed Jaheim to not have to learn every single thing in the you know in the playbook, different positions, different blocks. So he's taken a little bit of load off of Jaheim, and it's allowed us to build it more multiple with the two tight end sets and three tight end sets. Uh, the role is going to keep growing, like Coach said uh, during SEC media. He's like, "This is a tight end offense, and we're going to recruit tight ends to this offense, and we've got to get, you know, like Georgia is a great example. They have one of everything. They have a receiving tight end, a big tight end, a, a tight end that can block D gaps. So." You know, we're trying, you know, to to get to that position, building our room that way. And I think we got three guys right now that are playing at a really high level. And uh, again, just like Jason's package is what he can do. I think we can continue to grow the tight ends and, and what they do in this offense. Kind of similarly, I mean, obviously Trey has gotten a little more involved as a fullback. I know he's an offensive lineman by trade, I guess. But what's kind of the genesis in terms of how you guys got him involved in that? And I guess what were you guys seeing with that play that you, you guys kind of ran with him a couple of times in short yardage? And what, how, how do you feel like that kind of gives you guys some options, at least in short yardage yeah, that, situations? That play in the uh, – in the, the, it goes all the way back to when Coach Rule and I got started. Like it's just, it's just kind of the ethos of our mentality, the toughness. Like you know we're going to run it. Like you know we're going to run it on the right. Like – you know, stop it. And that's the mentality. And our kids love it. And they call for it on those fourth and ones. They were just saying, hey, you know, give us this play. And we did. And we didn't block it maybe 50% correct, but just the the mindset of the play, like they are able to get the first downs and stuff. But uh, we were sitting and we were talking about just trying to find a fullback. And they said, hey, Trey, and as a senior in high school, camp ran 4'7 here at 290 pounds or something. And that's what started the whole thing. And then we're like, oh, we could use him as a fullback. Next thing you know, he's out in 44 the next day, and we're using him with some stuff. And so, you know, his package has got to keep going. And uh, we tell him all the time, it's always fun to have 44 running fullback with knee braces on. That's, that's fun. A sad a two-parter for you, the fan touchdown. I know busted plays happen. Have you ever seen one that busted? Uh, I've never I've seen them that busted. I've never been lucky enough to be on the right end of that stick. But that was one of those weird things where they were playing a really good. Co if he wouldn't have scrambled, that was a really, really, really tough coverage. They were. It looked like invert one high coverage. They spun it to cover two, as they were spinning it to cover two. The exchange of the routes and then the extending of the play with JB kind of got their eyes distorted. So he was able to really just hide from everyone. If we would have just stayed in the pocket, it would have been a pain to try to get a completion. But because he extended the play, he's able to you know get lost and. Obviously, catch a touchdown, but glad it happened. I mean, I, take I about the, three of those a game. Yeah, we're, we're we're up there. You know, we're following the ball. As a coordinator, did you see Van that open? I mean, what were you thinking as that play? I was yell yeah, I was yelling, like, JV, you know, JV, 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 JV. And I didn't see. I wasn't watching Jason. I saw where Jason was pointing, and then he threw the ball. So he was seeing it as well. I don't know if you saw the Josh Van Twitter video they put up on the official account, but do you think you have a better golf swing than – Josh, I know he's on the left side. Of I it. heard about it, but no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, process, 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 Missouri. Yeah, I understand. Um, how much schematically did you do different in the run game in terms of maybe eye candy window dressing compared to maybe in weeks past? And how do you feel like the run game really evolved in terms of gap scheme, zone blocking over the course of the Florida game? Um, I hear that, like little layers of that, like people asking me questions. I. I swear to you, like it, it was the same. Like it, it, it was pretty much executed the same. It was just the, the energy and the, 
the passion that the guys, the confidence that they played with. I mean, we were a little bit better. Like, we had focus on, like, I'm not going to get into our schematics of it, but, like, it was the same schemes. Maybe we were treating them just a little bit different and tr trying not to simplify, but just say, hey, just, you know, kick these guys' butts right here, and then we'll handle the rest of them with something else. Uh, we'll talk off camera maybe someday about it, but it was the same runs, uh, same scheme, same everything. Just you, people have to understand, like, you start something and you practice, and you fail, and you practice, and you fail, you practice, then you get a little better. And then you start to have some success. So, I mean, it's just a product of what Coach Beamer talks about, competition. And we have Derek Moore out there with a competition sign, yelling and screaming every day practice. Like, it's, it's just the result of kids that are buying in, trusting in your plan, working their butt off, understanding that just because you work hard doesn't mean you're going to have instant success. But if you work hard on a continual basis, which is the, or, the genesis of the process, right, then good things are going to start to happen. And so that's where we are now. They're working really, really hard. And they're starting to have some success. Does that mean that we're never going to lose a game again? We're never going to mess up again? No. But at least they're, they're starting to see this, this path of hard work that they've done thus far. They can have something to fall back on and say, yeah, it is, it is working a little bit. Let's keep going. Let's go to Corey Diaz in the back left. Marcus, I'm curious for yourself personally, any vindication at all for you coming off that Florida game? <laughs> People have asked me that. Not really. Like, I mean, I, I know what we do. I've done, been part of this two times uh, with Coach Rule. So I know how this feels. I know not everybody knows how this feels. Like, I, this, there's parts of this when you start out that is awful and it's terrible and you're in the dark. And, like, it's part of building a consistent organ. Like, you have to do it the right way. And sometimes doing it the right way is not instanta like instantaneous success. It takes time. So I never wavered. I don't have any confidence issues. I know what our players can do. I know what our coaches can do. I know what I can do. And if we just keep working hard, I know what the end result's going to be. Was it fun? It was fun just to win a game, much less, I mean, to, to beat the Florida Gators and to score. You know, I was proud of our, our coaches. I mean, our coaches worked their butt off for two weeks. And what was the result? They scored the most points against Florida South Carolina has ever done. I'm proud of our players because what our players do. Through all the adversity and all the noise, they trusted us and they trusted our plan. And they went out there and they executed at a high level. And the result was... 40 to whatever it was. So, I mean, I'm, I'm satisfied for that. If I'm satisfied for vindication, I'm the wrong guy for the job. Like, I'm satisfied for the right reasons. All right, we got time for one more. We're going to Mike Healy on the front page. Marcus, I know there's no magic formula for it, but, you know, what do you guys have to do in order to be able to keep this success this week and not be able to take steps backwards after everything you guys were able to accomplish? Uh, you, you have to do corny better than everybody else. Like, we talk about all the time on offense, you know, play to the whistle, uh, be the team that plays the hard. Like all those little slogans that you see on your coach's uh, walls when you were growing up, the Vince Lombardi quotes that the kids think are corny but are very, very true. We have to do that better than everybody. Like we have to understand that you didn't beat Florida because you were lucky or because you wanted to. You did it because of the work and you did it because of the consistency and the competition. So do we have the discipline to come back this week and compete at that level? put blinders on and have the urgency and have the edge that we did throughout practice and throughout meetings. And do we, can we sustain that through the end of the week? And then can we get on a plane and get there? Can we maintain our focus, get to the game and start fast? That's what we're trying to do. And I think we're on the right path. I think we had two really good days of practice and I'm excited to see how this thing keeps building and building and building, but really proud of our guys just for trusting, trusting in the plan and executing the plan. Appreciate it, coach. Thank you guys.